Hello everyone. Um, in today's video, I'm going to be taking a quickish look at my PY129 paints. Uh, I've got one student grade paint, one artist grade paint that's on the cheaper end of things, and one artist grade paint that's on the more expensive side. Now, PY129 is a kind of weird pigment for me. I really, really don't like the actual color of the paint. It's just, yeah, to my eye, it's really horrible. But I do love the greens that I can mix with it. I mean, they're perfect for the kind of landscapes that I like to paint. Okay, so let's take a look at the first one. Uh, here we have Van Gogh Azimuthine Green Yellow. So this is a student grade paint and it's the cheapest of the three. Um, yeah, I'm a big fan of Van Gogh paints in general. Uh, the only real complaint I ever have about them is that they can be a little bit more on the opaque side than some other brands. But this one's beautifully transparent though. And yeah, it seems really highly pigmented. Uh, next up is M. Graham Azo Green. Uh, so this one is the most expensive of the three. Oh yeah, it's really, really, really nice to paint out. It looks like it might be a little deeper than the Van Gogh. Um, yeah, a bit greener maybe. I wouldn't say there's a huge difference between them really. Okay, so now onto the third and final paint. Uh, here we have White Knight's uh, ear, Eargasin Yellow. I think that's how you say it. Um, this is another artist grade paint, but it's available for much cheaper than the M. Graham. Yeah, this one looks quite similar to the Van Gogh, I'd say. Uh, yeah, it's not quite as green as the um, M. Graham. Yeah, it's another one that's nice to paint out. Um, I've been quite impressed with the White Knights paints I've tried recently. I'll definitely have to try some more from this brand in the future. Okay, so that's all of them, and here they are when dry. Now, seeing them like this, I'd say they are really very similar, actually. Um, I'd say the M. Graham seems more highly pigmented and maybe a touch greener. But in actual use, I'm not that sure I could tell any difference. Um, I think this must be the pigment with the least variation between brands that I've ever tried. Well, at least the least variations between these three brands that I have here. I've no idea about other PY129s. It would be interesting to hear your experience with other brands of PY129. I mean, are they similar to these three or some of them totally different? Let me know in the comments. So as I was saying earlier about not liking this color, but loving the greens that I can get from it, I wanted to show a few of the greens that I like to mix from the blues in my palette. So first is a mix of, well, with the main blue in my palette, which is Rembrandt Thalo Blue Red Shade, which is PB15. Remember that my goal here is to mix you know, natural greens for use in landscapes. Um, some people might want to mix bright, clear greens for their work. Uh, so this probably wouldn't be the right pigment for them. Uh, next I'll be mixing the PY129 with Windsor Newton Cobalt Blue, which is PB28. Again, this gives a beautiful natural looking green. Plus the cobalt blue gives it a little bit of granulation. Yeah, really nice. Yeah, I really like this mix. And the final mix is with M. Graham PB29 Ultramarine Blue. 
I like using this to mix kind of a dark forest green. Yeah, it's especially good in like trees, I think. Okay, so there's some examples of the kind of greens I like to mix using uh, PY129, and here they are when dry. You can of course vary the amount of PY129 or the blue in the mix and get many, many different shades of green. Uh, these just happen to be the kinds of greens that I like to mix. Um, even though I do like the greens I get, I still wonder if I should put this pigment in my palette or not. Um, I can't help feeling that PY150 could do what this pigment does and probably more. So having that in my palette would make this one kind of redundant. I mean, I don't know for sure that, you know, I would have to experiment with both of them. Um, yeah, what are your views on that? Would you pick PY129 or PY150 or would you pick both to have in your palette? I think my favorite of these three is probably the M. Graham. Um, not necessarily because of the color, though to my eye it does have a bit more depth to it. But it's more because it's just so nice to paint out. I mean, like most M. Graham paints, it stays quite wet and sticky in the palette, so, you know, it re-wets so easily. Um, yeah, and it also just flows from the brush so nicely. The other two are also very nice paints, um, especially for the price, of course. And they do look very similar to each other. Um, I don't know what your experiences are with these paints, but I'd be interested to hear what you think of them. Um, I'd also like to know of any other brands of PY129 you think are particularly good. Oh, and also any of your favourite mixes you like to make with a PY129. Let me know in the comments. And thank you very much for watching. I'll speak to you in the next video. Bye bye.